Just interrupt, Steve, because Eddie's got Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar, what would you make of that performance tonight from Amir Khan? Well, look, Amir, Khan, Amir Khan's momentum was shifting in the right direction. He was uh, doing a wonderful job in, uh, in studying his opponent, of uh, opening up angles, shooting different combinations. Uh, you can see that in the later rounds, he was probably going to stop him or knock him out. You never know in this game, but, uh, but I thought Amir Khan put on a nice performance. Should the fight have been stopped or should it have been allowed to go a few more rounds? Well, look, I mean, that's obviously not for me to say. I, look, I, I, I've been... Uh, I haven't fought yourself, though. You had a good look at the cut. Absolutely. It was, it was a cut that was not in a good place. Um, you never know what can happen if it gets punched again. It opens much more. Uh, more bloodshot uh, comes, uh, comes down on his eye. You never know. Um, look, the, it, that's why we have the doctor here. Uh, it's, it's at his own discretion, and uh, he made the call. I mean, he's joined your promotion group because he wants to break the American market. This fight is going to be on American TV. What do you think they would have made of his performance? Because he, he found it difficult to work out McCloskey's style. Oh, very difficult. I mean, any, any southpaw that, that uh, comes to fight you, that is a good, pure boxer, uh, Paul really put on a tremendous, tremendous uh, 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 boxing uh, clinic uh, inside that ring. Uh, he was a pure boxer. And Amir Khan, I mean, it goes, you, it goes to show you the abilities that he has inside the squared circle. Yes, it took him one round, maybe two rounds to figure him out. But after that, he was uh, uh, almost hitting him at will. Paul McCoskey was devastated by that because this was an opportunity for him to realize a life's ambition. The doctor rushed in quite quickly. Have you ever seen that before? Well, you've seen everything in boxing. <laughs> I've seen it all. Um, I I've, seen, I've seen fights get stopped uh, uh, with one, maybe half the size of that cut. I mean, you never know. Uh, it's, it's at the doctor's discretion and uh, he stopped the fight and now we have to move on to, uh, to uh, fighting Amir Khan in the States. We obviously uh, are talking about fighting Bradley, unifying the titles. There's a lot of options out there for uh, Amir Khan and we'll, we'll have to see and uh, wait what happens. From the way he faced for McCoskey tonight, I mean, are you concerned about a, a showdown against Bradley, who's a very dangerous opponent? Uh, I'm not concerned whatsoever because, obviously, when you face a softball and you face a right-handed fighter, it's, too, it's just a, a, a totally different ball game. Uh, obviously, and also, when you fight in your hometown, when you fight in front of your people, uh, there's uh, added pressure to you to uh, knock the kid out in one or two rounds. Um, I can understand everything that's going on through his emotions. I can understand everything that's going on through Amir's head. He had a lot of pressure on him tonight, and I did. I, I, I really give him a lot of credit for coming back over here and uh, putting on a, a spectacular show. Terrific. Thanks very much, Oscar. Thank you. Oscar De La Hoya, the head of Golden Boy Promotions, who's got a big stake in Amir Khan and his future potentially in the United States, maybe next time up against Timothy Bradley. Don't forget, very shortly, we're taking your calls. The number to dial 0500 909 693 or text on 85058. We're still here at ringside. Myself, Mike Costello, Richie Woodall, the former world super middleweight champion, and Steve Bunce. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? This, this sport of ours involves so much mind games and we're we're hearing verdicts here tonight which are black and white oh absolutely <laughs> according to the people that are in that ring the 60 people at the end it's absolutely black and white of course it's not black and white but i tell you what is a fact amir khan will try and go overseas he will try and not have a rematch and you're absolutely right mike when you when you sort of mentioned it earlier on with your eyes you could see the, i know you're not looking forward to the rematch neither am i but there is an argument there's a big argument for a rematch i don't want to see a rematch don't get me wrong but there is an argument for one there's also an argument for someone finally saying to paul mccloskey not at the moment paul if that was your plan, why didn't you just do a little bit more in the five rounds and two minutes that we did see? There's no way there'll be, there'll be a rematch, though, I'll tell you that for nothing. There's no way there'll be a rematch because he was made to look look terrible tonight, Amir Khan. And, you know, um, Oscar De La Hoya, he's in the entertainment business. And, and from his point of view, although he, he, he talked it up well there, Oscar De La Hoya, but that wasn't an entertaining fight, was it? So he won't want to put that on. He won't want that type of style ever again to face Amir Khan. They'll go Never. for a Bradley I, fight. I think Paul McCloskey tonight has been elected president of the Leave Him Alone Club. Oh, yes. Nobody wants to go any, <laughs> no, anywhere near that. If you can't help but look bad against him. Yeah. No. Like, well, you know, Oscar we know said, but though, we know he? that. Yeah, but the thing is, though, Steve, you said it yourself. I think Amir Khan was even surprised himself of how awkward that Paul McCluskey was and he couldn't work out the style he didn't expect him to sit back as much as he did he must I think they expected him to come forward occasionally 
which I obviously you well, didn't. Here's, here's the problem with Freddie Roach in his gym and then out in the Philippines. I wonder if he had a chance to speak to any of the British guys that have been in with McCloskey in the last five, you know, the, the, the last two or three years. I don't mean maybe watch a, a, a DVD or watch something on YouTube. If I hear one more person tell me, oh yeah, we can watch it on YouTube, that's absolute garbage. What you got to do is you've got to go and find the guy and you've got to go and speak to the guy's coach and see how they dealt with it. That's what you've got to do and you've got to find out just how awkward it is. You've got to make some contact and you know listen Freddie Roach terrific guy we know he's a mercenary so and so away from the little Lilton walk because of his Parkinson's let's, let's not mince our words he is a really really mercenary man okay and I'm going to tell you here if I was in charge of Khan, although we don't know who's in charge of Khan because there's so many Chiefs over there and not enough Indians, but if we can find someone over there to take a bit of the blame, they're going to have to look at Freddie and say, Freddie, what did you do in your build-up to this fight? Because you sent Amir out round after round after round after round to do the same thing. Sure, it was working, but it wasn't spectacular. And if Oscar, I'm not going to call him delusional, sorry for renting, I'm going to go in a second. If Oscar believes that's going to work on HBO, he's mad. And let's go to Addy, who's with the General Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, Robert Smith. First off, what did you make of the way the fight was stopped? Well, it's unsatisfactory, really. It's, it's very unfortunate. And what can you do? They're the rules. I mean, uh, uh, the referee deemed it as accidental head clash. Go to the scorecards after four rounds, and we won. But, you know, it, it, it's not nice, but that's how it happens. I spoke to Barry Hearn, and he was uh, furious. And he said he's going to be putting a complaint in. Say on Monday morning, that letter arrives at your desk. I mean, what can you do? Well, we'll talk to the WBA. So obviously, we'll send a report in with regard to the fight. But really, it was a voluntary defence. It wasn't. He's not a man, Paul is not a mandatory challenger. Amir obviously will move on to other things. But Paul has proved himself to be world class tonight. So uh, you know, he's up in the mix now. And if Amir Khan chooses to move on to fight Timothy Bradley, I mean, there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it as far as the hands are concerned. No, the, 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 Amir did nothing wrong. They're the rules. You know, as simple as that. Paul did nothing wrong. They're the rules. That's how it works. He lost. Unfortunate, but he lost how he lost. Um, everybody moves on and take it from there. Just a pity that it was a packed house here. Great atmosphere for it to end that way, I guess. Oh, it's very disappointing. Very disappointing. We're in a wonderful house. The, the, both boys were a credit to the sport, credit to the country. Thank you very much. Thanks, Addy. Yes, maybe 16,000 people in here tonight, but ultimately this was a bill blighted virtually from the start, changing TV channels, the undercard that pretty much fell apart, and then an unsatisfactory ending as Amir Khan hangs on to his WBA light welterweight title after a technical decision at the end of six rounds because of a bad cut above the eye of Paul McCloskey. Stephen. With Stephen Nolan. Thanks for your company tonight. Ten past eleven, five live, the Nolan Show. And as you've heard, massive controversy at the MEN tonight as the fight between Paul McCluskey and Amir Khan is stopped this evening. Here's the story of the night. Paul McCluskey! Championship of the world. Khan steps back out of range and lands a good jab as McCloskey for once went forward. Tries another one on the right hand. And McCloskey leans back from a four-punch cluster from Amir Khan, who still can't land anything really solid, although he is doing enough to win the round. McCloskey has a cut around by the side of the left eye. And Paul McCloskey and the referee waves it all over. Barry Hearn is absolutely furious here. He thinks they've got the raw end of the deal here. NBA light welterweight champion of the world from Bolton, England. Well, and then, of course, downhill from there uh, for Paul McCluskey. Mike Costello and Richie Woodall ringside at Manchester City Evening News Arena uh, tonight. The call's coming in already, lads. Steve Bell, the featherweight boxer and Corey actor, in the studio with me tonight as well. Steve, evening to you. Oh, and, and Mike and Richie still with us. David is our first call of the night. Hello to you, David. How are you doing? What do you think, David? Oh, it's the first time I've ever seen a fight stopped over a paper cut, to be honest with you. <laughs> And, and, and David, obviously, disagreement as to where that cut could have gone next. Well, yeah, you know, we've seen some bad cuts over the years. You know, I've been a, I've been a fan of boxing since I was nine years old. I'm 48 now. 
you know, you remember Lewis fighting Vladimir Klitschko and people like that, and you see the cuts people got, you know, and carried on fighting. And to, and to stop a fight 10 seconds before the end of a round, not giving his corner a chance, yeah, you know, these, these fighters, no disrespect to Khan, he's a class act, but at the end of the day, he's getting hand fed. Stick him in against someone like Manuel Marquez or someone like I, someone who can really do some business. Because he couldn't knock the skin off a rice pudding. Mike, Mike Costello, you're in very little doubt what would have happened to that cut had he have continued. Yes, it would have got worse. But we also said here, and, and endorsing what we've just been hearing, is that, you know, in, in situations like this, usually seasoned, experienced referees will give seasoned, experienced cornermen at least one chance to work on the cut. And again, as we said earlier, we are here at the MEN Arena where Ricky Hatton, I remember in one particular fight, but he was often cut, but in one particular fight against Vince Phillips, he had a giant slice of a cut over one of his eyes, and he had it very early on in the contest, but went on to win on points. And that's because the referee at that stage knew that in his corner, in that case, he had a terrific cutsman in Mick Williamson, and he was allowed to work on that cut, and, cu and uh, Ricky Hatton was allowed to survive. It wasn't a world title fight, but it would have greatly interrupted Ricky Hatton's march towards a world title. So I think that, that, that the main controversy here is that the, contra the corner of McCloskey weren't allowed at least a chance to work well, on it. I don't have any doubt that that cut would have opened again. Well